Welcome to Kathy and Kathleen Pop Culture. Hey, <laughs> how are you tonight? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you yeah. sound very far away. Are you in a tunnel or something? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I, you know what? I forgot to hook up my mic. <laughs> I was sitting here all day. I was like, I forgot something. I forgot to hook up my mic. <laughs> well, that's... Right, yeah. uh, that's good because I I had no picture till about two minutes before the show started, so <laughs> I had no video because I had un I had unhooked my. It wasn't this kind of problem, with Hey Arthur. I'm just saying it. Okay. <laughs> I had. Um, <laughs> I had unhooked my camera because I took it out. And I did some, um, I did some uh, photos and video uh, for some school stuff, and I hadn't hooked up my stuff back uh, to my computer until like two minutes before the show. And then I found out, oh wait, I didn't hook it up correctly, and I had no picture. Plenty of audio, but no picture to go along with things. And yeah, yes, we were one. Hey, Archer, uh, last Thursday, and that was kind of fun to see. Um, yes, Thursday was you guys were yep, thoroughly was, yeah, geeking out. We were thoroughly geeking out. And before but, I did, hey, Archer, uh, Archer, before I did, hey, Archer, um, I, I was late for hey, Archer because I had taped a TV show. Uh huh. Kind of like Mike Douglas style, where you perform and then they interview you. Oh, cool! Oh, cool. So I did that show. And where, where does um, that air, or when? Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know when it airs, though. It's on RVN TV. Okay. So I'll Is let that... you know when it airs at. Um, I'll let you know when it airs at because it, it's it's a fun. It's a it, you know what's cool when I performed. And they take my interview first, then they take my performance. And it was other artists in the room when I was performing. And everybody was quiet when I when I got finished. They were like, because these are all rappers and things like that on the show. I was the only mm -hmm. spoken word guy. I was a poet. And I was the oldest one there, too. So, you know, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then when I did it, they're all looking at me like, the heck? Oh, oh, geez, got some words, man, you know. So, you know, I was I was glad that, you know, I got there. And then this afternoon, I had to DJ a function. 
Oh, wow. You had a busy day. So it's, it's, it's been uh, the last three days have been like, go, go, go. Because last night I had to host a function. Mm -hmm. So between hosting last night and, and I've been packing the move. So with everything going on, it's but for you. What what what's that again? I said with everything going on, it's butts for you. And that's why I took a sip. It's oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever um, gets but anyway, um, no judgment. Yeah, it's, it's, I usually drink water and you know when I do the show, I drink ginger ale. Okay. Been drinking a lot of water lately and eating that's healthy good. for like three weeks straight. And you know what? Last night I was rushing around and I got some Burger King. Oh, did you try the Impossible and Burger? Sick, I, I'm not trying the Impossible Burger. I'm sorry. It's good. I mean, I DJ. Look, I DJ in a bit for a vegan restaurant today. I took my raggedy behind around the corner to the pizza place to get something with meat on it. I don't mess around. My like goodness, that. the I don't planet will not be saved because of you. I, the, I, the, Actually, the Impossible Whopper, it's, I mean, with all the bread and tomato and pickle and mayonnaise and all that other stuff, I mean, you know, you, you get the same sense as a Whopper. Yeah, but you know what, you know what, you know, you know what else about the Impossible Whopper? What? It's been possible to see Kenny Walker with one. Okay. All right. <laughs> So it goes. So it goes with your. Uh, how, how was your How was your week? My week was good. It was busy. It's uh, we're winding down. Our last day of school is Wednesday, so it's just you know. Oh wow! The, the craziness of uh, in the school times, dances and awards and getting all the things that need to be done done. Mackenzie's prom is next Saturday. Oh wow. Our graduation is Tuesday the fourteenth. Okay, cool. And then I'm coming to see you on Thursday, the sixteenth. Oh, the sixth. Oh, I didn't know you'd be down by then. I'll be down by the sixth Thursday. I'm, I'm coming down Thursday so I can relax by the pool, read okay. some comic books, chill. Gotcha. Have, have Have you guys cooked like good food for me? Oh, I don't really do that. <laughs> that's not <laughs> my purview. That's, that's I use the only thing I cook is like Sunday morning and sometimes like Saturday night. Uh, actually, um, I use usually cook something. I didn't even cook tonight, um, and I'm prone to ordering if need be because <laughs> sometimes I'm just not feeling it. I'm sorry. You like your New York days? You just order out. Order out, yes. Order out. No, okay. Last no, night, I, last night I had a really good dinner. Steve is in the house. Steve. Hey, Steve. Um, you know what? I, I had a really good I'm dinner last me. night. We we had uh, a group of gentlemen, uh, young men at our school. Uh, they're called Call Me Mister. It's a program to kind of groom like the next generation of educators, and even if they don't go into education, just uh, uh, in middle school, these young men have uh, on a weekly basis, they visit the elementary school to serve as mentors um, and read and, and work with the kids at the elementary level. And this week they interviewed like their predecessors. So they had to interview sixth and seventh graders to kind of take their place to be a part of the program. And uh, it was really exciting and interesting. And they also wanted to interview some teachers because once they interviewed the students, they needed to interview the teachers to, <laughs> to ask some follow-up questions to find out just what students should be a part of the program. It was very interesting. But a local restaurant here in Statesville, uh, Captain Galley's, and shout out to Captain Galley's, hashtag not sponsored, but um, the manager was amazing because she comped the meals for all the boys who participated in the program, not just at our school, but at another local school. So between Third Creek and East Idaho Middle, all those gentlemen got a free meal last night. And also hats off to our superintendent, Dr. James, was also on hand 
and actually pay for all the parents and adults. So just a really, really nice. cool evening and uh, really celebrating those young um, men. They what, did some what, exceptional what, work. What the menu at, what is the, what's the name of the restaurant again? Captain? It, it's Captain's Galley and it's seafood. It's seafood. Okay. Okay. Captain's, Captain's Galley. Seafood, of course. What'd you get? Uh, deviled crab, which was not my favorite, but uh, the jumbo fantail shrimp is always a winner. So you okay. cannot I'm not go a wrong. Good shrimp with person. Yeah, you're not a shrimp I person. I don't like shrimp. What does shrimp ever like do to shrimp. you? What does shrimp ever do to you? <laughs> he smacked. I don't know. I just I don't know. Well, I know some people. Some people can't do shellfish because they're allergic. Um. But there is something crazy going on with my second computer. So I'm going to turn that off because that's just annoying me. Um, trying to figure out how to turn it. Oh, there it is. Now it comes up. Oh, it was just blinking and okay. flashing and blinking so, and flashing. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, so we're going to get to our list here. Okay. Because I did. Our didn't, topic uh, tonight is. Oops, <laughs> sorry, wrong. I, I, I didn't do yeah, any images. Fault, I did the list. Yeah. The and list came in so late. Usually you do week. the list early. <laughs> I, as I told you, I had a busy week. I know. It sounds so like it. I did the list kind of. If, you were, with the list. if you were DJing and, and all that um, other kind of stuff. I was DJing, hosting, making appearances on other people's shows. So now we've done um, shows, I think, is. talking about reboots, but th this show was kind of boot the reboot because last week we were talking about some shows that just should not be, uh, should not get a reboot. And I know there have been a lot of shows uh, of late, like, uh, what's that song? Everything Old is New Again. And they've been bringing back just about everything. And... I don't know. It's a varying I, 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 success, you know? Well, there's a saying I said before. Old mm -hmm. shoes do not fit the same. Old shoes do not fit the same. But there's something about a good old pair of worn shoes that's familiar and comfortable. And especially in times, you know, like for the last two years with such uncertainty that uh, maybe having some of the old and the familiar is nice. I understand that, but that just means that sometimes they're a little worn. Can't put their feet in them right. They feel kind of loose. <laughs> you know, they're now, not as comfortable. Your feet might have grown, and your feet. So you know, what, they don't what list do you want to start with? The things that have been rebooted that maybe they should have left let's, alone. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's start with. Let's start with in the middle, with um. The reboots that have happened so far are the reboots but, that are coming out. Okay. Um, now, and, 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 when we say reboot, because sometimes it, it it's like twofold, because sometimes they take a premise and they just take the premise, all new actors and all new characters and kind of update them. Uh, for instance, yeah. like with the one at uh, one day at a time. And sometimes the reboot is, you know, you're tried and true, like like an X Files. So, um, some of the ones that Ed has added to the list are MacGyver, which I didn't see that reboot. I and I got it in full disclosure. I was I was not a fan of the original MacGyver. I guess I like the concept, but I didn't know whether I was a fan of the show. And it's kind of weird because some of the shows like the shows from my childhood that I remembered and watched religiously, but then there were shows that were out during my like twenties and thirties when I was, you know, partying and running the streets that I don't think I even watched. So like MacGyver and probably greatest American hero was another one. I don't know that I ever caught that one. They, did, they rebooted greatest American hero. No, they didn't. But I was just thinking of shows that are like kind of iconic that I missed. You never saw so have you seen? <laughs> Believe it or not, no. <laughs> uh, okay, that I thought that was funny. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just in a um, weird place. And uh, Ed Brown is in the house. <laughs> Ed's in the house. So, um, so yeah, so. You know, 
I, I, you know, there's one show that got rebooted that I meant to put on this list. What? And I'm, 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 I'm going to start off with this one because it was a horrible reboot. Um, they were using the same old jokes they used back in the day. They were mm-hmm. trying to be relevant now, and it just sounded so flat. Um, Murphy Brown made a comeback. They did a reboot oh, of Murphy yeah. Brown. Mm-hmm. And that was just, it was just bad. That You don't have that on the list, do you? No, I don't, but I just thought of it just now. Um, but Murphy Brown did a reboot, and it was, it, I mean, it was nice to see all the cast again. They could have mm-hmm. did like a special hour or two hour show um, of where they are now or something like that. But this show, they were trying to bring back, and it was the same old rhetoric that they were doing. Um, okay, we know that the Murphy Brown cast the act, not the actors so much, but the characters, all liberal characters, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, in a time where the political field is so divided, you know, they were sure, hey, Scooby Life, they were they were on one side of the spectrum, and you knew that, and it just wasn't, it wasn't funny. It was more sad than funny. Like you're mm. trying to rekindle your old roles because these are actors you don't really see on anything else too much, even Candace Bergen. And you know, they're trying to bring back their iconic show. And although you she know did what? a great turn in Miss Congeniality, but okay. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, and it was like it was almost like I think with Murphy Brown too, like it was very much of the moment of of the the um the politics of the time. And like you said, it's so divided now that I don't even know whether we're at a place to find like the humor um, in some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, she walks a dog named Murphy Brown. <laughs> yes, because that reboot was a dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> Love you, Candace Hogan. Oh, and the jokes don't stop. Okay. You All should, right. Next up Brown. on the list. Old shoes, old shoes, old shoes, old shoes, old shoes same Murphy Brown. Right. Candace Bergen. So you now, up Ed put one on the list. Uh, Cole Shack, uh, the Night Stalker. I didn't know whether I didn't know they remade that or rebooted that. Um, but I know why Chris Carter, the creator of X Files, got his uh, inspiration for the X Files from. Of uh, that uh, '70s uh, series with uh, Gavin McDar- um, Darren McGavin, who actually did a guest role on uh, the X Files, but uh, Cole, Cole Shack, the Night Stalker. I didn't realize they re- remade that. Now, Twilight Zone to me is one that is probably easiest to reboot, and to me, it seems like that that yes. could make a viable reboot. That. I think yes, that's sure. not a boot the reboot. I think the Twilight Zone you could bring back, and the joy of the Twilight Zone was were those uh, little stories and little vignettes. I think um, the uh, the era could come if when you try to make it either too graphic or too much, because again, some of the best moments on that series were some of like the simplest stories. Yeah. So, so yeah, a Twilight Zone reboot. And I think they did one, like, was it in yeah, the 80s or the 90s? Did. That's what I thought of this. They did, they did one recently. I okay. think um, Jordan Peele, I think, uh, produced it. Okay. It. And, okay. And that dude has say, a dark... and, and Let me know if I'm right or wrong. I think it was on, I think it was on like, it was on... Um, was it on the cable, like uh, HBO, or it was on a cable channel? And I think Jordan Peele was the one who brought it back. Oh, okay. That's what, that's what I want to say. That's why it's on the list. Not until no man come back. Okay, and let's see. Uh, the Twilight Zone used to scare the crap out of me as a kid. Uh, it was a myth. right. See. And that's the thing with with the Twilight Zone. You don't need all the gore and graphics. We don't need to see blood and guts spilled everywhere. It's just that psychological fear, that whole, yes. you know, or even 
even like something as simple, like, you know, the classic one with the guy who is the last guy on earth and all he loves to do is read, but then he breaks his glasses and just, you know, just those kind of torments. Yeah. And, and those, those twists. Yeah, definitely. Which made the twilight zone like yeah. classic. What was the other kind of horror vignette type? Um, uh, TV show from, um, was but Dark Shadows was more like a was it that was more like a soap opera kind of kind of vibe. So Steve said uh, there was another Twilight yeah. Zone show. It, see, it, Steve, we're we're having the same brain spasm, aren't we, Steve? Um, yeah. yeah oh yeah, Burgess Meredith Burgess was the guy with the gla glasses. Yeah. Oh, Night Ed Brown Night Gallery. Brown. Ed Brown is the always on it. Always on it. <laughs> always on it. And he also has the Creepy Outer Limits. guy, the doll on the wrong plane. The yes. So, it's yeah. just the Outer Limits. Oh, what was the one with Bill M Mummy, the little kid from Lost in Space? Yeah, I mean, again, just just the 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 creepy, eerie factor of the that's Twilight all, Zone. That's all you need. And that is all you need. <laughs> yes, Ed is on it. Night Gallery. I knew there was another one. Now, okay, 90210, that reboot. And you know who the, you know, we have our own closet 90210 fan. And, and I'm always going to out her when it comes up. Because I'll never forget one time I came home from New York and my mom was like knee deep in like Brendan and uh, Brenda and Brandon or whatever their names really? are. Really? Oh, she was all in on really? 902 know, at one point. Really? <laughs> yes. I am shocked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, lost in space. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, 90210. Now, with that reboot, I think they didn't they come back to those characters as adults, and it was their kids who were kind of. Yeah, I didn't watch the original. I didn't watch watch the original. I wasn't there for the reboot. Mm, okay, how about Hawaii Five O? Now you I'm, know who's I'm a, a South Jersey. I'm a South Jersey guy. I have no need to see California kids basking in the sun and having a good life. I don't. I don't need to do that. So don't you don't want to see Hawaii Five O. Living that life of crime. Um, I, I, I think the Y five O reboot is it. I don't think it's that bad a, a, a reboot. That's it's actually pretty good. Your, your dad loves it. It's still on, isn't it? Yeah, it's still on. Really, it's still yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about Hopefully Magnum PI? Yeah, no. That got think? canceled this mm -hmm. year. That got canceled, so it's not going to be back next year. Um, oh. And that says a lot because it probably shouldn't have been on. It shouldn't have been on? It's, you shouldn't have rebooted that. Okay. Why? Why did, why did you need to do Magnum B.I. again? Yeah. And again, it kind of captured Selleck like... made that a classic. Right, like an iconic, like he owned that role. So why try to yeah, bring it did. back? But role. again, I'm sure somebody's seeing dollar signs on some of these reboots. So they think, oh, wait, there's still some money on the table. So let's go back in and and redo it. Uh, next on the list, you have Boondocks. I've never seen the episode of Boondocks. I heard it was very funny. Um, and I think that's something you probably could reboot because it is a cartoon. Mm -hmm. um, voice actors and everything um, as long as you keep it funny and I think Boondocks you reboot it now but Boondocks okay when you reboot it Magnum P.I. Magnum P.I. was on 20 years ago or more Boondocks stopped like 4 or 5 years ago and then they're bringing it back there's mm -hmm. a big difference you bring back an iconic show from 20 years ago, and you bring it back a cartoon. People just thought it was on hiatus because of the pandemic. You can bring back the Boondocks. You can reboot the Boondocks safely. All right, I'll take your word for it. 
Oops, I keep turning. I keep X Files. The wrong buttons. Now the I know X Files is your favorite show. It, it's my favorite but show. That's another show. I, that's another show. I'm I'm thinking. You know what? Let the iconic stuff be iconic. Leave it alone. You you know what? I <laughs> I'm kind of torn on this one because. I love it so much, and I am such an X file P H I L E S that um like, like to be X Files was much must watch TV. I remember it used to come on Friday nights, and I would hate that because a lot of times I would drive from New York down to um, South Jersey on Friday nights, but I had to make sure I timed it so and the traffic wouldn't be horrible. So I'd get home in time for the X Files. Then they moved it to Sunday nights. And when it was Sunday nights, it was like, it was ritual must watch TV. It was my X Files, my Chinese food. And then afterwards, I would go online because they had these, um, services like CompuServe and Delphi, and there would actually be chat groups before there was YouTube and, and streaming. And, you know, back when we first had a a AOL and, you know, welcome, you have mail um, back in those days. And we would actually get on and there would be groups of people chatting about the episode, breaking down every little thing that happened. And yes, I was that nerdy that, you know, every nuance of it. And what was really bad is I, I was more a fan of like the standalone funny episodes as opposed to the um, uh, mythology episodes about alien abductions and the sisters and stuff. So um, so I was excited to see uh, the reboot or to for them to bring back episodes because, you know, I, I became fans of these characters and you wanted to see the evolution of Mully and Skull, uh, Mully and Skull, uh, Mulder and Scully. <laughs> but, but I think by, um, I think they ended in season nine. Uh, there were two movies, one mid uh, the run of the show, one at the end of the show. And that, that it, it was, I don't know, to me it was misguided. It was the wrong movie. Um, I didn't really care. It was like a standalone kind of monster episode for a whole long movie, which was to me a little much when really we needed the story of William and what happened to their son. But um I actually have not watched the last couple of episodes of the last season that they did with the X-Files because they lost me. They did. I was just kind of like, it's not as good as it was. And I don't know. I just, I, I didn't want to see it in. So I've avoided the ending. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what happens when you bring it back and just, you know, and it's it's like it's like uh, draining the water out of a rag, and you just squeeze and squeeze, and now that no, it's kind of dry it's, it's, it's now. The it's the same because Mash lasted on TV for like eleven years, <laughs> and it was a two-year war. Molly, <laughs> it was a two-year war that lasted on TV for eleven years because it was a great show. But then they tried to do after Mash with them all coming home. No, I wanted to see that. I don't want to see that. You did Aftermath. You well, didn't even put you know, Hawkeye or BJ in it. Nobody wants to see that. Although, that what happened to Colonel Potter and Ray What Potter. was cool and what probably doesn't need a reboot is the fact that they actually took a MASH character and instead of bringing him back in a comedy, kind of gave him a dramatic role, uh, Trapper John. Remember that, that series? That and was that was a good series. That was okay. like... You know, one of those, I guess, um, you probably could do a whole show on, like, series that revolve around medicine and medical series from, you know, Marcus Welby, MD, on down through Trapper John, which was kind of like the precursor to things like St. Elmo's Fire and, um, I mean, St. Elmo's Fire, St. Elsewhere, and um, Grey's Anatomy. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know... Um it has to be equal or better than the original. Yes, it does. That's 
That's what it is when you're going to reboot. And uh, twenty, the next, I you know what? Watched- when reboots would work, Kenny, I think if if you had a series that ended, but there were still stories to tell. You know, I know one story. It's not on our reboot list. It wasn't really rebooted. It was canceled, but fan requests and like the fan demand for it actually brought it back for like a fifth and final season. And that was another show. I love fringe. Um, it wasn't really a reboot. They just, I think they were off like two or three years cause it was canceled, but they did bring it back for like a fifth season, uh, because there was this demand from the fans to kind of hear this, the, the story, I guess, to give the story uh, a final. Yeah, a final that, that, that happens a lot too. That yeah. happens a lot too. Twin Peaks, I never saw the original and I never saw the reboot. So why'd you put it on the list? How are you going to talk about something you don't know anything about? I, I never watched Twin Peaks either, despite the fact that David Duchovny is in it. I I did not see it as well. Um, what is that saying here? There was a third lesser known sequel to mash called walter oh based on radar oh wow and radar was like one of the most beloved characters I know, I know. MASH. alone not interested <laughs> really not wow you know what i heard and this is off no, topic no, but you know, you know I, i'm gonna I'm say one thing in this tv show mash radar left and everybody was sad about that and then there was one ep- there was episodes after Radar left where they would mention Radar and people would be mad that he left and people would have feelings that he left and this that and the other um, 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 Jamie Farr's character a clinger you know had the effects because he had to take Radar's job and everybody's like you're not doing it as good as Radar and then they had the one episode where they were making a time capsule and certain people wanted to do it like a nice professional way and then. Hawkeye wanted to do it his way. Hawkeye and BJ wanted to do it their way. And then they combined it. And one of the things that Hawkeye added was Radar's teddy bear. And they got letters from Radar. I remember this episode. They got letters from Radar um, saying that, you know, he was doing fine. And when BJ's daughter saw Radar, she said, Daddy, because it's a man in uniform. And BJ felt a certain kind of way. And he hated Radar for a minute. What I'm saying is, Radar being off camera and them saying things about him and remembering him, that was the perfect send off off to Radar. You didn't need Aftermath. You didn't need a show called Walter. As far as we know, Radar lived happily ever after going back home and just being Radar, living on the farm. We didn't need Aftermath. We don't need a show called Radar. So in that sense, characters go off into your imagination. We don't have to know what happens to them. And and I think, I think you make a good point. Like some of the shows that are so dear and beloved is because you get to know these characters, you get to like love these characters. And um, part of it is we get to do some work. We get to have that imagination of where they wind up and how they end. And um, yeah. And when they kind of bring it back and are beating us over the head with it, we don't get that chance. Uh, one, our next one is one day at a time, which, uh, the original, and I'm sorry, but you know what? The seventies, I'm sorry. They had the best theme songs. This is it. (laughs) This is life with the one. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't be singing, but you know, and just sidebar side note, not really on topic, but um, Sirius XM, which if you guys have the radio but don't use it, I think it's free uh, till June 6th. So check it out. But there's this thing called Yacht Rock. And I know. <laughs> I guess I don't think I'm the demographic that uh, Yacht Rock is aimed to. But I can't help it. I'm listening and I'm enjoying it. Um because it's got some Michael McDonald and Hall and & Oates. And I didn't know that was Yacht Rock. But okay, whatever. But I was I was clicking through and I was on there. And you know what they were playing? They were playing like the song, the theme song to WKRP in Cincinnati. Which evidently it's a whole song. Granted, I only knew, 
I only knew the part that went with it. <laughs> Baby, if you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me. I know. But um, I, just a fun sidebar, side note. But check out SiriusXM. Oh, okay. I see the next one on the list. We talked a little bit about One Day at a Time last uh, week. I just thought it was interesting that... To me, if you are going to reboot, like that was like a total reboot. And I know we were all fond of those characters and, and you know, the, 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 the sister dynamic and, and Snyder and everything else. But what they did the reboot with like a Latin flavor, which I thought uh, was interesting. And I didn't want to, I wanted to, but then, mm -hmm. you know. Ah, uh, yes, it could be like KRP in Cincinnati. Not just the classic uh turkey scene, because that one you gotta watch every Thanksgiving. You can't help it. You just gotta watch it. I was looking up because I got Roku and I was looking to see if KRP was playing anywhere. And it I and I was about to answer that. Yes, it was Willie. Um, but anyway. It was. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm missing some of the comments. Let's catch up with yeah. the comments, and then we'll hit the list again. But, 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 and um, uh, Steve is saying um, it would be like Gilligan leaving Gilligan's Island. <laughs> and did you know that Gilligan was not his first name? Nope. No, his first name was Little Buddy. It was Willie. It was Willie. Yes. Oh, that's a letdown. Um. <laughs> Oh, it was Willie. Oh my goodness. How'd you know that? You that's really knew that? Or you Google it? Huh? No, that's a classic trivia question. Really? Yes. I had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah. No. But the next the things you learn on Kathy and Kenny explain pop culture. Gilligan's, Gilligan, Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island, first name is Willie. Uh, but that's when we have Heroes. Now, Heroes was a show where um, they did a reboot of Heroes and didn't last. Save the cheerleader. And, and, but save when the it world. first came on, it was Save the Cheerleader, Save the World. Now, let me tell you what happened to Heroes. Heroes was a great show. A couple things happened on Heroes. The you first season was great. I don't know whether... It was great. It... And what happened after that, there was a writer, there was a fake, the infamous writer's strike. And yes. one of the casualties of that writer's strike was Heroes because the writing that came on it was rah. now I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I know we're talking heroes, but this made me laugh. So oh. Willie's Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Willie's Allen. I'm sorry. I'm anyway, I'm, anyway, um with heroes, um, they had that going on. Uh, one of the characters that I liked um, um, was um, uh, who was the actress? Um, the actress with split personalities. Um, oh, um, I can't the, think of her name because because yeah. um, the the, uh, the actor I'm that played her husband said that they didn't get along, and that's how he got written off the show. And what they did was they killed him. The second season, the first episode, they killed him off. And the way they killed him off was kind of like, wait a minute. He's got powers. How do you kill him off like that? Like, how do you get stabbed? How does a guy who can phase? Was it Ari, Ari Lauder or something like that? Yeah, I um, think yeah Lauder. Um, the Lauder woman. Um, yeah. But anyway, from Heroes. Yeah. I, I got you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Anyway. They um they had a beef. She didn't like working with him, and um he didn't know what was going on, and he tried to call. It was you know Allie Lauder, um, Allie, and, yeah. And he 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 said that one of the reasons was probably racism that she didn't like being teamed up with him, and he you know he got killed off the show, um. But that might have been some of it because they were two great characters. They had a son together, and the son had awesome powers. They never really developed him. Um, but after you saved the cheer cheerleader, to save the world, then uh, Skyler was a big thing. And then at the end of the last 
season's episode finale, there was an awesome fight scene with everybody. And then after that fight scene, the second season started, it just went downhill from then. So yeah, Skylar. Did they time. did they revive it? Like I know it had a couple seasons. Yeah, yeah, it had a couple seasons, and then um, they took they took it off, and then but that was because of the writer's strike. Yeah, then they, yeah, then they then they no after after the writer's strike they still had a couple seasons. Oh, okay, and then they and then uh, it got off, and then they tried to revive it a few years ago, and I never saw the revival. Okay. Because well, it's not on well, anymore. So it must not have worked. Where's my? It didn't. It didn't last long. But my theory is, old shoes don't fit the same. Old shoes don't fit the same. All right. So I didn't go back. Well, to it. but now sci-fi shoes. I don't know. I think they change shape and and they still can be worn a little bit because for sci-fi shows, I think the fan base is so strong that those yeah. folks will come. And you know, if you sci-fi it, they will come. Yeah. I'm so Battlestar Galactica, which was a great show back in the day, and mm -hmm. then it kind of jumped the shark when they found Earth, and you know, two of the people came down, and they had all these kids with them, and these kids had powers because they were from out of space, and and they kind of jumped the shark with that. Um, and it was like it wasn't Battlestar Galactica, it was Battlestar Galactica, or something else, you know, Earthbound. I, I don't know, something, something silly. But then they cut it off after that. Now they brought Battlestar Galactica back, and when they brought it back, I think they rebooted from scratch. And it, I didn't watch the reboot, but it got a big following, and people loved it. Okay. Well, you know the sh the one show that has. And again, that's why I think uh, sci-fi is a little different because Star uh, Star Trek. I was about to say Star Wars. Star Trek has been rebooted in well, so many different really. forms. Well, because really. you had the original Star Trek, then you came back with Star Trek: um, The Next Generation. And yeah, they're not really reboots. Those are, I mean, those Star Treks. They weren't really. Reboots. Are they considered reboots or spinoffs? <coughs> spinoffs. Out the spinoffs. Mm. I don't know. Oh, because now the newest one is, I guess, on uh, Paramount, and that's probably yeah. the one streaming service I don't have. <laughs> um, we'll get you the password. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, let's see. Galactica, nineteen eighty. Uh, had a great premise, but was not done well. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. that's, it. that's the one when they went to Earth, wasn't it? Oh, Buck Rogers in the 21st century. You no, know, I met Gil Gerard at a Comic Con. And uh -huh. I, I, I think I pissed him off. <laughs> Uh-oh. Not the, not the wise thing to do at a Comic Con. I know. I know. I was like... Oh man, Gil Gerard! Oh wow! I thought like, you were dead. No. Yeah, I said something like that, or I said something like, "You know what? I was there, and nobody knew, and nobody knew who knew who Gil Gerard was." But here you are. <laughs> like, <laughs> he didn't want to hear that. He didn't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I gotta go, asshole. Like he kind of looked at me and kind of like, right, well, bye, Felicia. <laughs> Yeah, he kind of. I kinda, and I realized that the I realized that like, ooh, I just called him a has been. <laughs> <laughs> Wilma at Monster Mania. Wilma who? Wilma, who's that? Wilma. Oh, oh, Wilma. Um, Aaron Gray. Who? Wasn't it Aaron Gray's character? Aaron Gray? Oh, okay. Oh, from a best. I'm like, see this from, I this is where my pop culture mind goes. You say Wilma. I'm like, wait a minute. That's a cartoon. That's yeah. That's I met Aaron wife, Gray right? also. I met Aaron Gray at a Comic Con before, um, back in the 90s before Comic Con got so commercial. Because Comic Con's now are very commercial. Ed will tell you, Comic Con's Comic Con's now are very commercial. I met Aaron Gray. 
They actually um, have a Comic Con. It, it, <coughs> well, they call it a Comic Con um, here in Statesville, but it it's really just kind of like a comic book flea market type thing. There's no yeah. real well, that's what properties ever. That's really what a Comic Con is supposed to be. Um, okay. But anyway, I met Erin Green at a Comic Con one time before, and let me tell you, she was one of the nicest people. That you ever want to meet one of and she was so nice. And the thing about it is, I usually don't give my money to celebrities to take pictures with them. And at the time, there was Lou Ferrigno a couple of tables down who back in the 90s who wanted $50 to take a picture with him. Whoa. And, and like he wanted more money if you wanted merchandise from him to sign and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not yeah. But Aaron, let me tell you what Aaron Gray wanted. Aaron Gray took a picture with you. For five dollars donation to abused women in Los Angeles, it was oh, something wow. like that. That's mm -hmm. that's all you had, you had to give five dollars to this cause. She take a picture with you. So I, I think I gave five dollars, and I don't know if I I don't remember if I took a picture or not because we didn't have camera phones back then. Right. But I just said, you know what, that's a good cause. Just let me give you the five dollars. Oh, that's you know, pretty awesome. Five dollars is all she's asking to donate. It's kind, of, it's kind of nice when you, you know, when you, um, you know, meet, you know, stars and people that you really like their work on television and film, and that they actually are like nice people and not yeah. total ego maniacs. So that's yeah. that's kind of. I cool like the guy from Quantum Leap. <laughs> Quantum Leap. Who not Scott Bakula. But the other guy, what's his name? They used to. <clears throat> my picture her is something on my FB page. Yes. Um, the guy from Quantum Leap, uh, what's that guy? Um, not Scott Backler, but the other guy that would tell him, like, you know, what he's doing because he was in the actual time that he was supposed to be in. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I can see him oh, in my guy, head. Oh, that guy was a total jerk. Oh. <laughs> He was totally, I'm like, man, I stood in line for this guy. He was a jerk. Um, now, next we have Bel Air. Dean Stockwell. Um, Dean Stockwell. Bel Air. Oh, that's that's the reboot now. of uh, Fresh Prince, right? Yeah. Bel, have you seen this? I have not seen it. I have not. Is it worth it. watching? I don't really want, I haven't seen it. I, and people watch it. I really don't want to see it. I don't know. Is is it worth the watch? I don't. I don't. You know, because it almost. I, you know. I mean, no, I it being worth the watch. Fuller House was watch. worth the watch, just the just the curiosity factor. Yeah, but, but then no, it was a little bummer because they didn't have like you know the Olsen, Olsen twins, and you wanted to kind of see you know what happened to them. Oh, that's not on your list. That should be on your list definitely. Not Fuller House. Yeah. Fuller House. Fuller House was. What you expected it to be, mm -hmm. which is very family oriented, corny type, but right. a lovable corny. Uh huh. You know. Well, again, because you want to be, you want to be transfixed back in that kind of time and space, and I don't know because it seems like even with the most popular shows today, a lot of them are. If it's not a reality show, it's like an hour long either crime drama or something of that nature. I, I don't know the, the golden age of the sitcoms, like, you know, back in the eighties when you had like, you know, the eighties and nineties, like Thursday night must see TV yeah. kind of things. Um, I, I don't know if that age is, we'll ever get to see it again. Cause it seems like no. the sitcom is dead. I, I, yeah. I was like, well, it's not so much or at least in the new format of like the yeah. the shit Creek or you know, Modern days. Family. Back in those days, you had three channels, six, three, and ten. Those are the main channels you watch TV on. Now mm -hmm. you have so many streaming channels and so many different options. Right. That you know, you know, there's nothing that you it's, know. Back when we were kids in the seventies, you know, in the early eighties, everybody watched. Happy Days of Laverne and Shirley on Tuesday night. So you had to go it was like school. appointment TV. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and yeah. it was like on Tuesday well, night. I guess at work you needed something to talk about at the wa water yeah. fountain, and then and you know school, at school the next day. Yeah, yeah, at the locker. So, um, you know, everybody watched. Uh, you know, 
um, like, welcome back, Kata, and yeah. <laughs> you know, like, these are little happy days. And my, because we grew up on Longside, which is an all black town back in those days. Um, you know, we 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 were all disappointed on the episodes that Stick wasn't on there. The who? Sticks, the only black guy on Happy Days. Oh, no. <laughs> so once one, one episode a season, sticks. <laughs> one episode a season, you get sticks. <laughs> sticks to come in, tell one lightweight black joke, and leave. Everybody laughed. He was gone. That was I. You know how much money that guy must have made from doing just that. Look, man, we need you to come in Happy Days, be a 1950s black guy, say one black joke. All the white kids will laugh at and then leave. We're going to play you a lot of money, man. A lot of money. <laughs> of course, this yes. was a drummer. Because black people, rhythm, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be the drummer. <laughs> remember the show where Sticks came in and nobody wanted to come to the party because Sticks was at the party? <laughs> and, then, and then Richie made a big deal about having Sticks at his party. And sticks his girlfriend and having him at the party. And I want to, and, and he's like, and Fonz is like, yo, man, you have him at the party because you want him at the party, not because you want to prove a point. Because, you know, Fonz is cool about everything. Hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Fonz, Fonz, the Fonz wasn't racist. The Fonz wasn't sex. The Fonz was just the Fonz. So it's like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther yeah, King, Fonz, and Fonz. the Fonz. Okay. Hey, Champions know. of civil rights. All right. Let's move on the list because we're uh, already. Frazier. We're already past our end point, even though we started a little late. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, Frazier um, is making a reboot. There, there. Uh, that's one that's in the process. It hasn't aired yet. Well, apparently, right? so Frazier's coming out. In the, I don't know whether it's out or not yet, but why? Okay. Well, um, I don't know. I. I to me, those well, characters, it would be interesting. Question. It would be interesting to check in with those characters. I don't know. It might need to be one of those like limited run things. Um, well, like I mentioned last week, Mad About You <coughs> was one they brought back, but it was only on a certain, I think you had to have a certain cable. Um, was it, what, what's the cable down where you are? Um, up where you are, rather. Comcast? What's the cable? Com it it might have been Comcast. Or is there a cable system that begins with an S? In any case, they they did a Mad About You reboot, um, but I think it was only in certain places. And Steve is like, I had my fill with the original uh, Frasier. And I think what made Frasier good was just like the combination of the characters. I, I enjoyed it. Um Fonzie's new friend, 1950s uh, racial prejudice and stereotyping were explored uh, when most of their friends refused to attend the Cunningham's ha uh, Hawaiian Luau after finding out that Richie's, uh, Richie's band's new drummer and his date are black. <laughs> it's a very special episode of Happy Days. And that's what you don't get anymore. The very special episode. Uh, and the reboot that had you highly upset has not even been released, but Night Court, which Night you Court. feel like should not be tampered with. Harry Anderson has passed away. Uh, Marky Post has passed away. Mac Robinson has passed, passed away. Um, Marshall Wolfield and the gentleman who played Bull. Um, they do some acting, but... You know what? I guess it's hard too because for sh for a show like Night Court, and I know there were a lot of shows in the eighties and nineties that were literally built around comedians, and because there was this whole rush to, yes. um, you know, uh, get comedians off the stage and as stars of their own sitcoms, and uh, to focus them. And that's even before the success of Seinfeld, there was this rush to kind of put comedians in these star roles. I know, I think, uh, Kathy Griffith went through a couple of different sitcoms, uh, just shoot me. And just, I think just trying to find the right vehicle, same with David Spade, but, um, you know what they should have gave a sitcom to who Sam Kennison, Sam Kennison. Yeah. I think, well, I, I think his lifestyle probably wouldn't have uh, 
uh, wouldn't have facilitated it. But I know, like, I, although it, it, there's the good and the bad to it, because if you think about, like, like some of those episodes of Martin, when he was just, it, it just looked bad. Same thing with uh, Brett Butler. Um, you know, you just was like, oh, my God, I know they are making money on this show, but get this woman some help. <laughs> Same thing with Martin. Get this man some help. Um, but, you know, part of that whole Hollywood machine of uh, turning them out and spitting them out. So then we had some shows that um, should not or can't be rebooted. Uh, we're going to we, we need to kind of shimmy up this list pretty quick. Um, Moonlighting 24. And actually one on this list you have is Dexter and they have brought Dexter back. Yeah, it is back on, on Showtime. So it, it has its reboot. Um, different strokes. A, if unless you're going to do something differently you with the way you treat that. child actors, you don't even that. think about bringing that back. And yeah, a lot of these shows you can't do because they're not politically correct. Ah, uh, that's true. Um, oh, Firefly! Ah, uh, I would love to have Firefly back. I've never seen Firefly. That that was a, a spinoff from um, uh, the the Whedon universe. Uh, so yeah, Firefly would be Man, a would fun one. To bring back. They did have a movie. I'm sorry. I'm go sorry. ahead. No, uh, I, I was saying you were talking about Firefly, and I thought you were moving on to Married with Children. Okay, no, no, because uh, Serendipity uh, was the movie with the characters from Firefly. Married with Children, yeah. I, I, guess, I, I disagree because I think you can bring that back. Um, oh, yeah, see, Ed Brown's all about it. Firefly with the original cast, that would be awesome. Married with Children. Um, I think you you think it can back. come back? I think you can bring that back. Because I'm like, imagine, with all these like imagine, woke imagine, people, imagine, like the jokes were so like sexist and racist. I don't know whether they would. Yeah, not, but imagine the Bundys as grandparents. The Bundys as grand. Oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. I think that would be fun. That would be <laughs> totally fun. You can bring that back. That and imagine, well, imagine, Bud, as, you know. imagine Bud being somebody's father. Come on. I, I like that. We, we we need to call the writers of those shows and, and bring um, that going, back. Going, going to the chat. Um, yeah, Ed, I remember when Harry Anderson was on yes. Cheers. And um, yeah, and Harry Anderson did a couple of episodes of Cheers. And one of the episodes he did, it was like a big scam thing. that Because he would always come in for one season and he would try to scam everybody and and um, a Ted Danson would, cat character would, would kick him out all the time because he would scam people. And one time they uh, they got scammed. And in order to beat the person that scammed them, they called Harry, because his character's name was Harry, they called Harry to help them scam the scammer. Oh, yeah. And, it was well, like and I think that was a part of his, like his stand-up was doing like, comedy and, like, yeah. comedy and magic, like sleight of hand like scam going on. So let's yeah. have good times, the Jeffersons. Now, for political correct reasons, you cannot bring these shows back. And, well, but like I said, you could probably maybe do it with, I think, with a twist. Um, maybe good times, I don't know, but why not bring it back with, like, you know, an API cast or, I don't know, just... With, with some diversity or something. Although those were all uh, spinoffs or, yeah. um, of All in the Family, yeah. Maude, Good Times, and Jefferson's. Yeah. Like they all came from like All in the Family from those roots. Yeah. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now to me, uh, that as a reboot would mean an all new cast. Um, no, 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 no. Because in every generation... Iconic. It's too much of an iconic show. Why? Why would you touch it? I don't know. I, I would like to see it. I I would love to see it come back. The only way you can bring that back is if you bring the original cast back and, and do like a where are they now thing. But you can't put new people in those spots. Well, and I know the, the comics have gone on, and you know, um, 
but and I'm saying reboot it, but you wouldn't have you wouldn't have a Xander and Willow and and you know and Buffy per se, but you could have another vampire slayer, and that would give you a chance to introduce an all new kind of cast and what that would look like in a school today. And again, getting to, and that's the fun thing with sci-fi, you get to answer all these questions about the world, about life, about how we interact through this sci-fi lens. Like, you know, again, high school as a horror movie, you know, kind of. Well, here's the thing, here's the thing. Since we've had Buffy Vampire Slayer, we've had countless shows about teenage vampires on TV. Yeah. Like why? Why would you do it? But and and again, that's where the creators of these shows come come in because it's their uh, their writing, their creativity, making these characters that um, a people can like and relate to. The writing being so crisp and sharp. I don't know. I I, I kind of. And, and again, I'm like a diehard Buffy fan. Like I, I love me some Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I gotta find out where where is that streaming? Cause you know I haven't watched it in a while. At one point, it was coming on, um, like some of the cable channels, and I would catch. It. I would I would actually watch it in the morning when I got dressed. At at one point, like after this, it was like five five years or so after the show was off the air, and they were showing it on like TNT or something in the early morning. So when I got dressed, I was watching old Buffy episodes. I'm like, oh, man, this is good. The best Buffy episode ever, I don't know, might have been The Body, one of my personal favorites. Also, like, Once More with Feeling, the musical episode. Um, but anyway. Um, uh, yes. Small girl, you can't. Oh, Ed, I like that idea. Okay. Just a show all around Faith, because Faith was awesome. Elijah Dushku, I... Faith girl, because you gotta next, have faith. Next, next, we have, next, we have Smallville. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you the one reason why you cannot bring Smallville back. Smallville was about Clark Kent, a young Superman before he became Superman. A young Clark Kent before he became Superman. So, um, on Smallville, he went through that 10 years it was on. He went from the journey from being Clark Kent, um, learning more about his powers and what he could do in the last series where well, everybody was kind of disappointed in this but the way they did it was the last show of the series he finally wore a Superman costume flew around real quickly you could barely see him and all you saw was a red and blue blur and and saved the day and he was Superman and him and Lois lived happily ever after you can't reboot that Smallville because you told a complete story from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Smallville was supposed to be about, not about Superman, but about Clark Kent becoming Superman. Okay. Since you already so, said, that, said that, you can't reboot Smallville. Okay. You told a complete story. Why are you story told. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Cosby. What else we, Cosby? Cosby. You can't reboot Cosby. And again, to me, Cosby is one of those sh kind of shows, almost like Murphy Brown, like Miami Vice, like Magnum P.I., that kind of lived in the moment of that time. Yeah. Although, you know what? To me, the funny, not funniest, but the oddest thing I always found with Cosby is that every time I remember when the one daughter and Alvin, I guess, uh, when they first got married and they were living in a place that was supposed to be kind of like dilapidated or, you know, like not, they weren't living in like, you know, the best of places. They yeah. would always show a, an exterior shot. And it was these you know, row homes in, in, in New York, but it was from a street in Park Slope, Brooklyn, which to me was like the most expensive place to live in Brooklyn. I'm like, no, that's not the right shot. <laughs> I, I always about. found it amusing. Yeah. It, it's okay. like those inside jokes. You know what my favorite inside joke is from the it's from a movie uh when Harry met Sally, which I know a lot of people have seen. When Harry and Sally were trying to set their best friends up on dates, and I think um 
uh, Sally was trying to set Harry up with like Carrie Fisher and Harry was trying to set Sally up with, you know, Bruno Kirby. And don't ask me why I'm using movie characters versus actor characters. I don't know why I just did it. Go with it. Um, but they're trying to find something for them to find in common. And at one point, I think, um, you know, Sally goes, oh, you're, you're both from New Jersey. Uh, uh, and then they go, oh, what part? And she says, like, T-neck. And he goes, Haddonfield. And I'm in the theater. I'm cracking up. But if you don't know, like, that one place is North Jersey, one place is South Jersey, that's just not a funny joke to you. So... I don't know. There's a whole movie written with a joke for like, what, a couple thousand people who live in New Jersey. It was a moment. I liked it. Sorry. It wasn't well, like, I want what she's having. Well, yeah, we already talked about Night Court and next we're oh. going to Cheers that we can, like, you really can't, do, like, people sitting at a bar passing time. Do you really want that rebooted? Yeah. I think you could. I think you could. Honestly, I think you could do Cheers. Because again, I think well. the might humor in it well. is is in those characters and 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 their interactions. And as you got to know those characters uh, that you related to them, um, plus if you also throw in that that will they won't they element that we had with the whole Sam and Diane, I honestly think Cheers could be done. I think you could, um, and you might even be able to do it in the same bar in um, in Boston. I, 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 yeah, I disagree with you. I think that can be rebooted. Now, again, are you going to have are you going to have characters Sam, Diane, and Coach, and 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 Woody? No, you would have new characters. But I think again, you build the right characters, you can do it. I think you can do it. And I'm going to disagree on the next one, and I'll tell you why. Golden Girls? The Golden Girls. You do a Golden now, Girls. Actually, and go with me on this theory, and Ed, Steve, the Golden Girls, in essence, is a reboot. In fact, the Golden Girls formula has been rebooted over and over again. You know where you've seen that formula before? You've seen it in Facts of Life, Living Single, It's a Living, Alice, The Golden Girls, that formula of having like four women or four friends. And, you know, you, you, you have the ditty one, you have the sex pot, you have the brains. It's been done before. So, yeah, you can reboot The girl, Golden Girls. It has been rebooted. But can, take, but can you take four retired women and move them all in together again? Hot in Cleveland. It's been done. You can do it. Uh huh. Lost. I've never seen Lost. You know what? I was in for the first half of the first season, and Lost lost me because the whole. Uh, yeah, I. I couldn't hang. I couldn't hang with loss. Um, I I needed some answers, and I, I like I said, I love me some J.J. Abrams, but loss lost me. Sorry. Um, Breaking Bad. That dude. Well, again, it has it, it's had some sequels or a spinoff. Better Call Saul, and that that's been oh, interesting yeah. and fun. I've never but, seen Breaking Bad. You've never seen Breaking Bad? No. Oh my God. Well, while you're sitting by the pool, I have all the CDs or CDs, DVDs. Yeah, I, I got, I, I, well, I came I, late to the Breaking I'm, Bad party. I'm so I had to go there. buy all the CDs and watch all the seasons to kind of catch up. I'm, I'm not there for that. I'm not there for that. It, it's good. It's good. No. Yeah, I um, agree. It's awful. Friends. Friends. I think you can reboot Friends too. You can't I mean, Friends. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that's been done before with different shows where you get a bunch of people who know each other, their friends, and their different lives and how they progress. It's done with Seinfeld, pretty much, you know, and other shows. Um, but 
can you redo it? Can you do another Ross Rachel? Oh, I, definitely, definitely. The whole, the whole, will they, won't they? I mean, that's that's a staple so for for drama it. series for comedies. Some things are iconic, and you gotta leave them alone. Now, how I met your mother. It was on the list of things that couldn't be redone. But they did kind of try to do it with How I Met Your Father. Now, I've watched How I Met Your Father. It's semi-hilarious, but it's not How I Met Your Mother funny. Mm. Now, some of the, now, this is supposed to take place in the present time and in the further future. Um, so How I Met Your Father, uh, a couple of people from How I Met Your Mother has shown up on How I Met Your Father. Okay. So, and he did that the first season because you kind of, I, I, don't, I don't think, I mean, got renewed for another season, but I don't, okay. think they it was, I don't think they thought it was good enough. And he's like, you know what? Let's get somebody from the, from the original show in here quick. <laughs> they brought Kobe Smolders in. Okay. You know, they brought her in. I'm like, oh, wow. They, they went for the big one. Wasn't she killed off in the MCU? <laughs> no. Oh, she's still alive? Okay. Yes. Okay. She, I, 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 got, I forget got, the head count from yeah. Infinity so War. She got, she got, she got, she was in the blip and then she came back when everybody came back. Oh, okay. All right. Well, she was I at Tony Stark's funeral. I forget, I forget about the blip. Um, oh, we got, uh, we are getting a, uh, a spammer. Oh, nice. A spammer? Yep. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? And that's, so, the last one we have is uh, Happy Days. Well, and again, Happy Days was part of that. And the, and again, this was something that happened in the early 80s. There was, at least 70s, early 80s, there was a nostalgia for the 50s. So, maybe now that we're in the the, the 20s, that there'll be nostalgia for the 80s. So, the sh so the stuff that will come back will be things like um, uh, sweatshirts off the off the shoulder and leg warmers, which is why shows that are in the list of you should reboot, you put down Fame, which yes, I'm there for that. Well, <laughs> you I know I'm there for that. Here's why I think you can reboot Fame because we have another list of shows you should reboot, and I didn't put a lot of them down there, but Fame should be rebooted because we have all these shows about these reality shows, these reality talent shows of young kids like American Idol, young kids with all this talent, you know, going to American Idol and competing, yada, yada, yada. However, if you had a structure, and you, had, you do have something like that with the high school mu musical and Glee, you know, mm -hmm. but those are regular schools with kids that can sing. But if you get, had a school for the arts with kids, and you could probably redo fame and it could probably be done better than it was in the 80s. Mm. So I, I'm totally on board with fame. Another show which you probably don't know is Zoe. And do it better than the remake, the reboot of the movie, which was yeah, just yeah, horrible. Another show is, you probably don't know, it's called Zoe 101. Mm -hmm. It was Britney Spears' little sister starred in this show about a girl going to like a special boarding school and all these kids went to the school far away and they lived in the school campus and how they all got on. And the reason I'm saying you can reboot this with the original characters if you can, because one of the last shows, um, one of the characters that liked the lead character, Zoe, um, received some kind of letter that he was supposed to open in 15 years. So they rebooted that, and it's like 15 years later, and he opens because they did they did do a commercial one time, but it was like 10 years later, and it's really mm -hmm. like you got to open it up. No, it said 15 years. <laughs> so if they did, you know, you could possibly reboot that and say, see all these kids after later. they got out of high school and they're older now, and, and this kid opened up this letter that he got from Zoe 15 years ago, the love of his life back when he was in high school. So that would be a nice reboot. Um, Ed thinks we should reboot the Fall Guy. The Fall Guy. I I need I need to know his reasoning for Fall Guy. Out of the yes. blue. Why Ed? Why? I don't know why we should reboot the Fall Guy. I do think Greatest American Hero should be rebooted though. Greatest American Hero. 
yeah, reboot it because I missed it the first time around. But yeah, why are we bringing um? Uh, why are we bringing Lee Majors out of retirement for that? Yeah, I'll always is Lee Majors him. still alive. I'm always yeah, still, he alive. He still alive. He's okay. still alive. He's still alive. But um, I don't know why we would bring him out of retirement for that, or we would use the character. And do another fall guy from scratch and call it Lee Major. Oh, this is why. Heather Thomas. Who's that? Oh. Um, not Heather Locklear, because there was a lot of Heathers in the huh? Yeah, Heather Locklear, Heather, yeah, Heather, Heather Thomas. She was the it girl back then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're bringing back the fall guy. I never watched the fall guy. I really wasn't impressed. Reboot the show with different actors. I agree. Okay. If you reboot it with different actors, because if you're going to bring back Magnum P.I. and MacGyver, you might as well bring back the fall guy. <laughs> bring them back. Bring them all back. <laughs> anyway, yeah. well, we are falling back and falling out. Oh, my buddy's there. Hey, Archie. No affiliates in the house. Uh, what's up? Right. Stop by watching Stranger Things with the lady. Yes, I love the new season of Stranger Things. Oh, I got to get it on is, the new season oh of Stranger God, Things. It is off the chain. Did we talk about Stranger Things Thursday? I don't think we I, did. I don't think you guys talk Stranger Things. You oh, guys were yeah, more I on. You guys were on some comic book. When you started naming uh, the actual comic book artist, Bendis, or I was like, oh, this conversation is way too deep for me. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I lost anybody. Uh, <laughs> hang on. You know what? It was. Um, well, you, it was the, you went down that rabbit hole. I'm it like. Was I, being, I, it, was a, it was a pleasure being on the show. Anytime you want me on, you let me know. Oh, yeah. Kenny was hanging out with Hey Archer this week. Um, oh, it was so funny. I was in Walmart and I saw. the. Uh, what were y'all talking about? Was it Ultimates or? Yeah, the Ultimates. Okay, because I, I I saw some figures in Walmart and it made me uh, think of you as well as Hey Archer. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Ed, you yeah, need to check it out to Thursday watch, nights uh, at eight. Thursday 18. show would be on it, and uh, you can check out Hey Archer at Nerd Affiliate affiliated on YouTube. Uh, check out Ed at Ed's Eighties page lots of cool throwback music and i love that it comes up in my facebook timeline because i yeah i like going down those memory lanes and such i think i posted something that someone sent me that was just like oh this has got to be on ed's 80s page uh but all that as well as check out kenny and words out productions next week we are what are we doing we had a plan, didn't we? Next week, we're going to pay tribute to the LGBT community. Okay, so we're going to talk pride in the movies and um, probably with oh, most of Kenny's um, screen on. crushes. Huh? Look who just tuned in. Who just tuned in? Oh, dude. Hey, it's our dungeon master. Um, Reboot the Warriors, you cowards. Well, we're doing TV re reboots. Yeah, that's a movie, man. We're doing that's TV. Movie. Warriors! Like, come, come out of the play. That movie is awesome. My I, don't think, I, I think that's a movie you cannot remake. No. Because people have cell phones. They would have got it. They could have called an Uber or Lyft and got out of there quick. Well, no. Like, again, the remake would have to be at that time period. So, you know, if it is the seventies, they would have to remake it in the seventies, as opposed to trying to update it and make it for, um, for this current time. Uh, they probably couldn't do it. They probably yeah, couldn't right. do it. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Um, yes, the Warriors movie Warriors is awesome. awesome. I awesome. have. You know what? You know what? I hate that. I had some great movies on VHS and. Um, I don't have any way to play them. And I know now they have some technology that you can transfer them on either CD, DVDs, but that's a lot of work. 
I'm like, yeah. I'd have to look at, I mean, I got boxes and boxes literally of VHS. Um, and I know there are services that could probably transcribe those things for me, but way too right. much work. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, how are we summing yeah. this up, my friend? Like George, my you're coming late and wrong, man. You're coming late and wrong. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, George. I, I need George's help tomorrow to move, so I'm not giving you a hard time, son. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you better be nice to my Bridget nephew. Sanford, son. CGI, <laughs> Fred Sanford, and cast Kevin Hart as his son. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Now, now, oh, you could man. have the original. You could have the original Lamont come back because he's still alive. You big dummy. And, and then have Kevin Hart be oh. his son. Oh, Lamont, and then have Kevin Hart be his son. Yeah. And they still are in the whole uh, uh, in garbage the business, or and that's what. And you can have you can have the somebody like. Business. Well, let's not get Monique because Monique seems to have a problem working with everybody. But you can get somebody <laughs> like. You oh Monique would be a good Aunt Esther no, no, or Aunt no. Esther's daughter. She, she, has, she has a problem with billing and stuff and working with everybody. She doesn't get along with anybody. Um, oh, well, oh I don't think well, it's Esther. Uh, uh, the junkyard. That's why I was. I couldn't think. Yeah, of, uh, um, yeah. You would have to have. Um, who I'm trying to say? Who's the lady that was in Coming to America and Ghostbusters? Um. And Ghostbusters, she Leslie Jones, purple. yeah, Leslie Jones. Oh, yeah, Leslie yeah. Jones as like Aunt Esther's daughter or something, yeah, that yeah. comes, you fool. Um, that, yeah. that would come and just pick at Lamont. Well, yeah, Lamont can't do it now because he's you know, if he's a pastor, he's, he's not a, a pastor. pastor, I don't think he is. That's what Scooby said. Look, <laughs> if you pay him enough money and tell me you don't have to curse. <laughs> He will do it. He will do it. No. Oh, remember Chico and the man? Oh man. Chico anyway. and the man. Oh, okay. I, we can go down a whole nother rabbit hole, but we thank you guys. You can do Chico and the man. I don't know if you can do Chico and the man. You big dummy. But okay, you can, go ahead. The kid that plays uh, the Latino kid and um, Cobra Kai, you can get him to be Chico. You know, oh, you know what? I was watching, and I don't know what channel it was on, but actually, War Games was on. And after War Games, uh, they showed the Karate Kid, the original Karate Kid, and it was making me think because I still have not watched Cobra Kai, and I know how everybody says it's so good, and it's it great. is on my list. And maybe this summer I'll get to watch it when I can watch TV again. But, um, but I. Yeah, I just love seeing some of those throwback movies. George is saying reboot Nickelodeon's all that and call it that's all. <laughs> and it's just them as adults and make it a drama dealing with midlife prices. Well, that's it. That was uh wasn't that Keenan Thompson? Because he's got yeah. a gig, right? Yeah, well, and I don't know what happened to the other guy. Show, but it got canceled. Okay. It was funny too. I liked it. It was funny. Yeah. I canceled. Um, because they did the movie Good Burger, right? Wasn't that a character Good from Burger. the All That? Okay. Welcome to Good Burger. Um, a uh, walk to Good Burger, home to Good Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, no more orders because our show is done. It's ten o'clock. Oh, um, really? Yes, it's ten oh, o'clock. Wow. Yeah, you got to get out of the studio, my friend. Yeah, I got to go, go pack. All right. Oh, so you're moving in the morning? Yes. Oh, and wow. And it's not even the first of the month. In the middle of the month, you get to move? No, no, get out of my business. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. I guess at one point you'll tell me, you know, your new address and stuff. Yeah, I'm moving. Just leave it at that. I might right. not. I mean, people might not need to know my new address. Leaving? No. On that midnight train. What? I'm going to have to be really secretive. Send okay. Send to the old address. And, and they'll, they'll forward they'll it. Let me know. They'll, they'll screen all my... All right, Magnum P.I. You got it. 
All right. Any anything else? Any other show that we didn't mention that should never be rebooted? Or what show did we miss that does need to be rebooted? Oh, you know what? I wish we could reboot the like the the genuine um uh, well not it's not really a show, but it was like a special. And that was Battle of the Network Stars. Oh, and I, know I would have, love to have that rebooted. I know we don't I have like three it. networks anymore, but if we could do it, like even if it was like Battle of the TV shows or something like that, um, where they participated in all those like activities and races and the canoeing and just well, bring they, back they, Battle they, of the Network Stars. They did bring that back at one point. Mm hmm. Um, but it really wasn't the same. <laughs> Die Hard. Reboot. You know what? We could reboot Die Hard as a TV show. Oh, that does not need to be happen. That does not need yeah, to happen. Die Hard could come back as a TV show. Yeah. And John but McClane could spend all season trying to rescue people. And it could be within like, a, it'd be like 24. 24 hours. Like each show is an hour. And that's an hour of the day that he's trying to do, you know. And John McClane so again. John McClane is. We can to reboot it, it as a TV show. No. Battle, Battle, Battle of Network movie. Stars did come back at one point. The problem with Battle of the Network Stars and why you can't do it is because there's we so many have. stations and so many networks and so many streaming channels that you really can't. Well, do no, it. actually, you can do it, but you could almost do it as a weekly series, almost like like an Olympic type competition, whereas one week it might be ABC, like, like brackets or something like it's like ABC versus TBS. And then the next week it's, you know, um, um, NBC versus like um, Hulu. And, you know, you could almost do it with brackets and whoever wins goes on to like the next, different you level did, to get to the two it. stations or streaming platforms and then they All face I, another one, I gave Kaplan as my captain even though he's dead <laughs> he's dead he's dead <laughs> he's dead but he did, he did smoke Robert Conrad back in the day he oh yeah the greatest moment, which I think is one of the greatest moments in television Gabe Kaplan. Was nobody expected him to win. Robert Conrad. <laughs> nobody expected him. Robert Conrad's being all butch and he's the man. And Gabe Kaplan's the funny guy. And he looks out of shape. And next thing you know, Gabe Kaplan smokes him on. And we were like, everybody's looking at it like, what the what? We have to Google that to see if they have that. Somebody has that up on YouTube. Gabe Kaplan versus Robert Conrad is in battle. It's on. It's on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. All right. Um, we, I, I would. I would. I would bet my last dollar on that, and I do have my last dollar in my pocket. So, but yeah. So it is on YouTube. Um, game. Oh, yeah. it is. It is. I. Uh, yep. Somebody. It, it's usually Gabe Kaplan. It says Gabe Kaplan. Um. Uh, uh, race Vers versus Robert Conrad. Yeah, there's Telly Savalas on the video. There's uh, there's uh, Fair Fawcett talking in the beginning. It's like nine minutes long. It's as Howard Cosell interviewing ah. Telly Savalas <laughs> at the beginning. All these people are dead. All these people are dead. <laughs> Gabe Kaplan is not alive. Gabe Kaplan died. Uh, Gabe, Gabe Kaplan, Kaplan passed away. I'm positive. He did? Yes, Gabe Kaplan passed away. Oh. Uh -huh. So I I I know the woman who played his I'm wife pretty, passed away. But all right. I'm pretty sure what? Gabe Kaplan passed away. Okay, we're going to put a link to that video because after the show we're all going to go watch that video. But we got to close out this show. Oh, he is still alive. <laughs> He's, He's killing off people. Why, why are you killing off people? I know Gabe Kaplan. So that's three people from Welcome Back Carter still alive. Gabe Kaplan. Um, 
John, John Travolta. John Travolta and Lawrence um Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody All right. Dead. Uh next week, uh June is LGTB uh LBGT Pride Month. So we are gonna take a look at yeah. Pride in pop culture and uh celebrate that next week so join us and we just hope you have a good safe week we will see you saturday night 8 30 kathy and kenny explain pop culture yo god bless us only keep living peace peace thank you for geeking, geeking out with, with kathy, kathy and kenny on kathy and kenny explain pop culture